management of our forest has changed quite a bit. Uh, for one, uh, our fire policy has. Uh, one thing we used to think about wildfires is that they are bad for the forest. And that was part, part of that was because we thought we were gonna run out of timber in, in the United States. We thought we were gonna have a timber shortage around 1900. And uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't the case. We can grow timber, we're capable of producing wood for the United States. And fire was seen as a threat to that. And now we see fire as an, as an integral part of ecosystems. And, and it acts within different ecosystems very, very differently. And so now that we're trying to understand that, we, we can use it as a tool in order to prevent catastrophic wildfires in some places or uh, allow them to occur in some places. There's less fear in it, but it's, it's important that if we're not gonna fear it, we need to understand it. For decades, foresters have used fire to thin overgrown forest areas vulnerable to catastrophic wildfire. At the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, students ignite a prescribed burn to manage the health of the 7,800-acre Yale Myers Forest. I'm Joe Orefice. I'm a second-year Master of Forestry student with Yale University, and we're going to be doing a prescribed burn here today on Yale Myers Forest. This is a site we're going to walk around it, show everybody the boundaries so we know where the fire needs to be and where we don't want fire. And so if fire occurs where we don't want it, we're going to put it out. That's the idea. This is about an acre. The whole site's two acres, but we're gonna burn only half of it today. So the purpose of these is for, and Anne can speak more on this, but it's for, um, we do ecological research. If you look behind you, there's some pipes sticking out of the ground, and that's a uh, research site. And so that site won't be burned within this fire, and so we can compare areas that aren't burned on the same site with areas that were burned and get differences. This site we refer to as the oak savanna, and you can see the very large trees that are widely spaced. Oaks, when they're this size, are resistant. Their bark is thick enough to be resistant to the light fires that we're setting. These oak savannas are very important for certain uh, wildlife species. The large opening with a few large trees is the forest structure that we're trying to um, develop in this area through the use of fire. We can come in and cut, and that was what was originally done, is a lot of things were cut, leaving some nice large oaks. But as you can see, there's all kinds of saplings that come up. We could go in and we could either herbicide them or we could cut them with, with clippers. But because we also have a course on fire science and policy at the Yale School of Forestry, one way to incorporate some of the research that we're doing with classroom work is to have a prescribed burn here every few years. We've burned this site in the past, and if you look over here to where we um, have burned, there's no small saplings. Whereas if you, if you look at the site behind us, there's saplings that are almost 20 feet tall. So it's clear that the fire is controlling the um, unwanted vegetation, which in this case is black birch regeneration. When the trees are this small, it's very easy to kill them because all we have to do is keep the cambial tissues, uh, heat them up to 60 degrees centigrade for about a minute, and it just, it cooks the cambial tissues, but it will sprout, it will continually sprout, so we have to continually do this. A hands-off policy toward forests fails to acknowledge the historic ecological role of fire. The result, persistent catastrophic wildfires in the West. Prescribed burns can play an important role in reducing forest fuel loads. We're now learning that many of the roles that fire played were important. Um, they cycle nutrients in places that are very dry, like the inland western U.S. Fire renews the forest. Now, when we have too much fuel on the ground, such as with 100 years of excluding fire, the kinds of fires that are burning are not the kinds that burned historically, and we want to get back to putting fire in the ecosystem as a process, but under the um, natural range of variability that you would have seen it, not some of these catastrophic wildfires that are a result, a direct result of uh, huge fuel buildups and uh, droughty climates. We're a global school of the environment that encompasses quite a broad arena. We define forestry much more broadly than many schools do. 
For more information about the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, visit environment.yale.edu.